to stresses we will discuss the relation of all the systems in our body what is the role of each system in homeostasis first of all we will know about homeostasis what is homeostasis condition it is very short term homeostasis is very short term and very simple to maintain the constant internal environment to maintain the ability of body ability of body to maintain constant internal environment internally body have two types of environments the first one is stay watch अच्छा बना है हाँ तब सब अर्को वाले अच्छा बा and homeostasis uh, we will study all the systems all and the role of all the systems in homeostasis uh, up to now in FSC and matrix we only study the renal system and integumentary system means skin the skin and kidney which have the main role in homeostasis but there is the role of reproductive system musculoskeletal system gastrointestinal system renal system and homeostasis and homeostasis what is homeostasis the ability of body to maintain the constant internal environment and we know that body have two types of environment two types of fluids one is intracellular fluids we have already discussed intracellular fluids and extracellular fluids and extracellular fluids what is intracellular fluids intracellular fluids are the fluids which are present inside the cell this is inside cell in coming lectures we will study the internal structure of cell in a very big detail the golgi body is the fluids the cytosol the cytoplasm the protoplasm the uh, endoplasmic reticulum peroxisome lysosome we will study but inside the fluids is called intracellular fluids and outside fluids is called extracellular fluids this is the internal environment of uh, body the ability of body to maintain these environment constant for example if we take more sodium in uh, food in water uh, more electrolytes how the body maintain that uh, concentration constant here for example if we drink water full of sodium if we drink water and full of sodium what will happen here i already told you that in from extracellular fluids it can easily cross the capillary wall and goes to blood but when the sodium concentrations increases in extracellular fluids the fluids will come from intracellular fluids to fulfill the requirements of these electrolytes due to which the cell shape will changed for example it will shrink down because now here the intracellular fluids will be low as compared to extracellular there is a factor which is called osmolarity osmolarity is very important normal osmolarity of cell is 290 to 300 and outside an extracellular environment it is also 290 to 300 this is constant and this is called homeostasis how the body maintain these values in intracellular fluids and extracellular fluids sahi da hoz go rahe da jide kana mun sara da mun sara de extracellular environment but the extracellular environment it comes is unary for example sodium de potassium de har sadi da de miqdar aw chikam dal 
इंट्रासेल्युलर फ्लूइड्स की दैट वन है यूशान साकल दे तमंग वायु होमियोस्टेसिस ठीक ना नाउ फॉर एग्जांपल वी हैव सिस्टम्स वी विल इमेजिन दैट दिस बोर्ड इज आवर बॉडी दिस होल बोर्ड इज बॉडी एंड वी आर टेकिंग ऑल द सिस्टम्स ऑन बोर्ड बट वी विल स्प्लिट नाउ द हार्ट एंड राइट एंड लेफ्ट For example, I have this is circulatory system. This is circulatory system, and the red color always showed oxygenated blood, oxygenated blood. We have right heart here. This is right heart. This is sorry. This is left side of heart, which have oxygenated blood. This is left atrium, and this is left ventricle, and this is aorta. For example, we split. For example, we have heart right and left. We split the right and left. We are taking left side here and right side here. and the system which is responsible for oxygenation is respiratory system but this blood uh, the blood is also circulating in digestive system also in renal system one circulation takes one minute in whole body at rest um, like uh, now you are sitting here in rest position your one circulation period is one minute after one contraction the blood takes one minute to circulate in whole body but when we are exercising when we are in work it takes 15 seconds one circulation takes 15 seconds or in one minute six times the blood circulating the body uh, the, uh, this value is according to your book gaitan uh, maybe the paper kim rashi ha ठीक ना दैट इज एन मुंग सर असकी के जमा मतलब दारे जो पटोल बॉडी के स्टा सर्कुलेशन की की द ब्लड द यो में नठली चिकलता से परेस्ट के वो सीता संगनास ये चिकला तकार के या मंडा वखे एक्सरसाइज के बिया पर यो में नट के शपक पेरे सर्कुलेशंस की की पर बॉडी के द न्यूट्रिशन द फुल रसूल द पारा ठीक ना सो दिस इज द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ हार्ट एक्चुअली दिस इज एयोटा which giving blood to all body here is what respiratory system for example this is respiratory system in homeostasis the first role is of respiratory system we will study three or four things the first is the intake of nutrition and electrolytes the second the removal of nutrition and electrolytes the third one is the regulations of body and the fourth one is the protection of body these all four factors occurs in homeostasis by one system we intake electrolytes we intake foods nutritions and in another system when the uh, nutrients metabolize in body we well have to remove this waste from our body the systems which are responsible for removing the waste are um, separate and in another system we will study the regulations for example if kidney takes more electrolytes if kidney takes more blood how it regulates how the uh, nutrition is regulated for example if glucose level is high in our body the condition is called diabetes how the body protects our body from diabetes how the body protects how the body protects us from hypertension from exceed acidosis from alkalosis these all factors occurs in domain of homeostasis so the first system is respiratory system this is respiratory
system. Respiratory system has two roles. One is taking and one is removing. Taking of oxygen and removing of carbon dioxide. Now think, what is the effect of carbon dioxide and on our body? It will cause acidosis because carbon dioxide is acidic gas and it will uh, uh, decreasing the pH of blood will cause acidosis. So the respiratory system uh, remove the uh, exceed carbon dioxide from our body and protect the body from acidosis. The second one is our body normal functions need oxygen and respiratory system provide oxygen to all the body by giving the oxygen to blood and blood is circulating in body it gives the uh, oxygen to all over the body. For example, we have talked about the extracellular and intracellular environment. We will take extracellular and intracellular environments here also. For example, I have cells. These are the body cells. I already told that this board is imaginary our body. These are our body cells. For example, here. These are our body cells. Here is left side of the right side of heart. This is right atrium and this is right ventricle. And this is our vena cava. This is our vena cava which will take the deoxygenated blood from body. Here we have a capillary bed. Remember there are three types of main uh, blood vessels. The first one is uh, arteries, capillaries and veins. Arteries takes oxygenated blood from heart and uh, distribute the oxygenated blood all over the body. The veins uh, collects the deoxygenated blood from body and transfer it to heart. After uh, going to heart, it will take oxygen from lungs through pulmonary circulation and it will oxygenate it and again it circulates in our body. Right? So here is capillary bed. What is capillary? Capillary is the minute type of blood vessel. And the exchange of nutrients, the exchange of gases is possible through capillaries. So, the capillaries bed will cover the cells, body cells. For example, we have capillaries bed here. This is capillaries bed. For example, one branch is, for example, imagine that this is stomach. And the gastric arteries come from aorta and it divides on stomach cells and it gives the nutrition, it gives the oxygen to stomach cells. For example, this is the distribution of arteries which is called capillaries and the whole structure is called capillary bed, capillaries bed. But it will give oxygenated blood and takes deoxygenate. It takes, uh, it gives oxygen and takes carbon dioxide. So due to carbon dioxide, it will again converts to deoxygenated blood. Mean that capillary bed have two parts. One is venules and the second one is arterioles. In arterioles, there is oxygenated blood and the cells getting oxygen from these uh, capillaries but here the cells gives carbon dioxide and it again uh, become deoxygenated here the veins will comes out from cell we will talk that where these veins will go here for example i have the division of this is aorta the division of aorta gives us arteries the division of Arteries gives arterioles. 
and the division of arteriose gives capillaries and this whole structure is called this whole structure is called capillary bed it is called capillary bed but on another side it will again collects in the form of venules and become vena cava and veins it will goes to the left the right side of heart from inferior side the inferior vena cava coming and from superior side superior vena cava is coming so this is the vena cava vena cava have oxygenated or deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood and it will goes to the right atrium it will goes to the right atrium so these all are coming to right atrium right atrium this is right atrium this is right ventricle this is left atrium and this is left ventricle from left ventricle the oxygenated blood is going to right atrium the deoxygenated blood is coming there is difference from left from right ventricle it will goes to lungs it will goes to lungs but we will talk later here we have two main circulation which is called one is gastric circulation and second one is renal circulation gastric and renal gore so here in capillary bed we have body cell for example we have lung cells we have kidney cells here are cells are present these are body body cells which taking the oxygen and giving carbon dioxide right here are two circulation which have the main role in homeostasis one is gastric system one is gastric system for example this is gastric gastrointestinal we have esophagus stomach we have small intestine and also we have large intestine right the second system is kidney system renal system we have two kidneys ureters urinary bladder two systems are separating from here but we have two we have eight to not to we have eight endocrine important glands we have important eight endocrine glands which have contribution in uh, hemostasis but we will discuss in few minutes here from aorta the circulation goes to gastrointestinal system gastrointestinal system like this it will form capillary bed here but we are not taking capillary bed again right from here the veins will like this right and from here a blood goes to kidneys what is the role of kidneys <coughs> what is the role of kidneys filtration filtration from here the blood will again collect and will goes to the deoxygenated circulation this is the second circulation the third one is for example we have brain also we have brain also here
brain and brain is also feeding from this circulation for example this is the circulation to brain passing from here and again to superior vena cava this is brain circulation we have respiratory system we have gastrointestinal system this is gastro or simply it is called digestive system this is urinary system remember we are not uh, studying or learning the physiology of these systems we are only learning the the role of these systems in homeostasis and this is nervous system nervous system we have also the system here which is called musculoskeletal system are you thinking what is the role of homeostasis in musculo what is the role of uh, musculoskeletal system in homeostasis there is some role any one of you the musculoskeletal mean the muscles or bones to the deep homeostasis ka sakar de so we have another system which is called musculoskeletal system and musculoskeletal system we have muscles we have muscles and we have bones this is musculoskeletal system skeletal system we have endocrine system and in endocrine system there are eight important glands endocrine glands we will take only two for your um, easing learning we will take only two examples the one is pancreas pancreas and pancreas is present here in digestive system we have pancreas the structure of pancreas is like a leaf pancreas and the second important thing is liver this is liver all other glands have also role in homeostasis but we have pancreas and we have liver we have also adrenal gland adrenal glands are present on kidneys adrenal glands are present on kidneys for example this is adrenal glands these are adrenal glands also we have pituitary glands also we have salivary glands uh, all have role in homeostasis right so now we will start homeostasis and contribute it into all these systems what is the role of these systems in homeostasis but i already told that in homeostasis we will take four factors the one is intake of intake of electrolytes and nutrition the second one is removal the third one factor is regulation and the fourth one factor is protection good but for protection we haven't any organ we have drawn here for example we have spleen here spleen do you know about spleen we have spleen spleen we have thymus gland right but spleen is very, is in a fear now the first system in intake of electric uh, electrolytes and nutrients we have respiratory system we are taking oxygen from external environment for example this is external environment this is external environment and from external environment we will take oxygen oxygen is coming from trees through photosynthesis and photosynthesis the carbon dioxide 
water and in the presence of ultraviolet rays react and it forms the glucose plus oxygen the oxygen form is in gaseous form gaseous form and when we inhale the air we takes oxygen so oxygen we taking from external environment here the lungs is divided into alveoli we will take one alveoli here for example i have alveoli and oxygen came to alveoli for example here the capillary bed is present or not yes sir capillary bed is present for example this is capillary bed this is capillary this is capillary from here the oxygen goes to blood it goes to blood from blood this blood will now go to left atrium it will goes to left left atrium it gets oxygenated blood from lungs and travel it into left atrium but <clears throat> this is pulmonary this is pulmonary vein this is pulmonary vein this is the exception in our body all the arteries takes oxygenated blood but we have one vein which is called pulmonary vein takes the oxygenated blood from lungs to heart you will remember this point in your uh, brain in your mind that all the things which leaving the heart are called arteries and all the vessels all the blood vessels which joining the heart which coming to heart are called veins and which leaving the heart are called arteries this blood vessel coming to heart so it is called vein rather that it it have oxygenated or deoxygenated but it is coming to heart so it is called vein it have oxygen but oxy oxygenated blood is due to hemoglobin and hemoglobin joins four oxygens here it will join four oxygen because hemoglobin have four nitrogenous ring and one nitrogenous ring have the capability to bind with one oxygen so it will take four oxygens from here when the heart contracts when the heart contracts and this system is called cardiovascular system cardiovascular system and what is the role of cardiovascular system through contraction it contributes it distribute the blood to all parts of body from here it will contract and the oxygenated blood will goes to body these are body tissues but in body tissues we have two types of environment now this is the role of extracellular and intracellular environment here we have extracellular extracellular fluids extracellular fluids and here we have intracellular fluids all the nutrients all the nutrients oxygen all the things which are present in uh, in blood will first go to extracellular fluids well first first goes to extracellular fluids uh, because i already told that there is no barrier between the plasma and interstitial fluids and it goes easily it uh, exchange easily so all for example from here we have oxygen we have oxygen oxygen will goes to extracellular fluids here it goes to extracellular fluids this is extracellular fluids from extracellular fluids the cell will gets oxygen nutrients etc all the things for example we also have here the digestive system 
and digest your system now we have taken the example of apple apple so we have apple here and apple have carbon carbohydrates c6 is 12 or 6 through digestive system when we eat apple it converts into c6 h12 o6 mean glucose the glucose goes to blood for example these are glucose and with carbon dioxide the glucose is also traveling with uh, plasma so from here it also gets glucose extracellular environment gets glucose from extracellular fluids this is extracellular fluids which have now oxygen and glucose from here the cell gets glucose and it also gets oxygen what is the empirical formula of glucose c6 h12 o6 this oxygen will react with glucose and break the glucose into carbon dioxide water plus atp the atp is energy we will uh, discuss in glycolysis electron transport chain but this water i already uh, told you that our body is approximately uh, 60 percent of water or 80 percent of water 70 percent of water water is coming also from metabolism this reaction is called aerobic respiration this is called aerobic respiration because this this metabolism is uh, occurs in the presence of oxygen is called aerobic respiration where anaerobic respiration take place <coughs> anaerobic respiration char ta ki gaya for muscles ki ki in muscle cells tick da kha we have now carbon dioxide is present in intracellular intracellular fluids now this carbon dioxide is also present here and all the cells we have carbon dioxide and all cells give, gets oxygen from extracellular fluids this carbon dioxide will first goes to extracellular fluids it will first goes to extracellular fluids for example it will goes to extracellular fluids from extracellular fluids the carbon dioxide will diffuse into blood and this blood will goes to join the deoxygenated part of our circulation so now this is deoxygenated blood like here also the oxygen comes to all the other parts of our body for example these are different types of body tissues and this green is extracellular fluid extracellular fluids extracellular fluids uh, present between the body cells is called interstitial fluid and extracellular fluids present in blood is called plasma right so oxygen will goes to extracellular extracellular fluids and from here it will goes to intracellular fluids from intracellular fluids it will react with glucose it will react with glucose and carbon dioxide and water is formed carbon dioxide will goes to blood again and the blood will become deoxygenated from here this is intake we will go for removal also but these two are the first one is the taking of oxygen is the function of respiratory system the intake of nutrients this is nutrient glucose is nutrient this is the function of digestive system but 
there will be some changes occur in nutrition which we are taking in our food for example we have toxicities we have poisons also in in every food we are taking toxin toxins poisons what is the role of liver in our body what is the role of liver this big gland it takes the toxic things from food toxicities and convert it into detox detoxic poisons mean the detoxification is the function of liver so from here the circulation which goes to liver is of two types the one is portal circulation and the second one is hepatic circulation we will discuss this in detail in digestive system but here it takes circulation from digestive system which is called portal circulation and it also taking circulation from aorta which is called hepatic circulation hepatic circulation hepatic blood mean that liver takes two types of blood one is partially oxygenated blood which is coming from digestive system and one is pure oxygenated which is from and you will surprise that it takes 25% full oxygenated blood and 75% partially oxygenated blood liver in liver when this blood reached this blood have toxins it have drugs for example when we taking panadol when we are taking panadol panadol goes to stomach from stomach it will goes to liver if there is any toxicity in panadol or any type of other drug the liver will first detoxify that thing this uh, liver have a system which is called cyp450 system it is called cyp450 system which is for detoxification of things of drugs food any type so these toxins will convert into diluted form mean detoxifications occurs in occurs in liver for example there are many things which we are taking in inactive form for example if we are taking uh, vitamin d vitamin d uh, injections when we are taking orally in milk today this vitamin d3 is an inactive form inactive d3 which is called cholecalciferol i am giving you one example only for your learning that when we are taking vitamin d3 vitamin d3 for example we have d3 but d3 is in inactive form which is called choli calciferol what the liver what the liver doing liver gives hydroxyl group to choli calciferol and convert it into 25 hydroxy choli calciferol which is active form what i want to say that liver also converts the inactive things to active and it also convert the active into inactive this is called metabolism the activations and deactivation the detoxification this is called metabolism the liver takes the portal circulation blood and converts all the toxic into non toxic which is called detoxification and after that it gives this blood into system and then the blood is circulating and circulates the detoxify things in blood cells if if liver is non functional if liver is non functional then the toxic things will not will cannot uh, convert into detoxic or non toxic things and it will affect body for example if we are caused by hepatitis if we are caused by cirrhosis hepatic failure now we will go for removal we will go for removal of uh, the toxic things from body the what is the role of liver it converts the toxic into non toxic but the accumulation of that non toxic also affect the body 
we have we must have to remove it from body and there are some system which are working for removing of these waste products from our body for example the remove, first thing which is very toxic is carbon dioxide which is forming which is synthesizing in every tissue in every cell of our body for example here the metabolism take place carbon dioxide formed carbon dioxide formed carbon dioxide formed the carbon dioxide will goes to extracellular fluids from extracellular fluids from extracellular fluids it will goes into blood and now the blood is called deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood is also coming from digestive system it is also coming from urinary, urinary system it is also coming from brain it is also coming from other body tissues and the whole deoxygenated blood will goes to the right atrium right atrium from right atrium it will goes to right ventricle but like this when the right ventricle contracts when the right ventricle contracts the blood will pumped out into the pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation is between lungs and heart from here this is for example pulmonary artery this is pulmonary artery because it's coming from heart this pulmonary artery this is the first removing waste from body which is in the form of gas carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will goes again to respiratory system and will join this capillary bed which is already present in alveoli but here this blood have carbon dioxide this blood have carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide will diffuse into alveoli or into lungs from here when we inhale we are taking oxygen but when we exhale we giving carbon dioxide to external environment and in external environment carbon dioxide will react with water and it will form glucose c6h12o6 and stored in uh, stored in fruits and vegetables we again will take this glucose in foods this is the first system which is responsible for removing the toxic things from body the first one we are now studying removal system the first the second system which is responsible for removal of waste products from body is digestive itself and digestive system when we are taking food for example our food also have cellulose we have the non digestive parts of food when we are taking foods it have two parts one is digestible the second one is non digestible for example cellulose the non digestible things will goes will diffuse into digestive system and digestive system it will collects and will form stools or feces and will remove from body through digestive system so digestive system have dual role it have two roles the one is taking of uh, nutritions which in the form of uh, glucose proteins lipids uh, electrolytes carbohydrates but it have also the role of uh, in removal of waste products from body the second thing we have liver in liver in liver also waste products accumulating for example i am giving you one example which is a protein what is the structure of amino acid one central carbon that have carboxylic acid group hydrogen alkyl group and amine group this amine group is waste amine group is waste ammonia or uric acid 
these things are formed from this amine group in liver it will separate from this amine group it is converted into glucose will used for energy production but this waste is goes to biles and biles will collects into gallbladder from gall gallbladder the common bile duct a uh, hepatic bile duct it will goes to intestine from intestine this ammonia is added into intestines waste and will remove with feces so liver is also responsible for removal of waste product from body in the form of urea in the form of ammonia this is the second system the first one is digest the third the first one is respiratory system the second is digestive system the third is hepatic the fourth one is urinary system it takes the blood it takes blood from here and kidneys are responsible for filtration of blood what is filtration filtrations occur in nephrons in glomerulus we will study in detail in urinary system but it separates the waste products from blood and gives it into urine urine formation here one process occur called urine formation through urine the waste product leaves the body so this is the third fourth system which is responsible for the removal of waste product from body and this is hemostasis at by this for example if we are taking more electrolytes or more sodium in our fluids the kidney is responsible for that it will remove the excess amount of fluids the excess amounts of fluids as well as electrolytes from our body and this is one of the main system which maintain the blood pressure in our body kidney this is one of the main system which is responsible for maintaining the blood pressure of our body this is the another uh, system which is responsible for removal of waste product from our body the next we have regulation we have regulation how these all the things are regulated how the first one is this main system is responsible for regulation which is called nervous system nervous system regulates it takes impulse from outside and according to that impulse it uh, acts in our body and maintain these systems body for example for example if you are taking more fluids if you are taking more fluids and the fluids are accumulating in extracellular fluids and in intracellular fluids it will affect your body it will cause edema edema is the swelling of body due to fluids accumulation edema this system have pituitary gland which is called the master gland one of the very important gland of our body it gives a pituitary gland and pituitary glands give signals to kidney that now you have to focus on removal of fluids from body because we have a lot of fluids an excess amount in our body so the first regulatory system is nervous system, system. regulation of these intake and removal of body for example also this system regulates the digestion it regulates the urine formation it regulates the contraction and relaxation of um, for example stomach etc so the system which is responsible mainly for regulation is nervous system the second is endocrine system an endocrine system we are taking the example of pancreas 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 produce two types of hormones one is called insulin and second one is called glucagon uh, why we are discussing insulin glucagon mainly here because our body main fuel is glucose main fuel is glucose our body takes energy from glucose mainly so the regulation of glucose in body 
is the responsibility of these two hormones which are formed by pancreas alpha and beta cells alpha cells produce glucagon beta cells insulin when glucose is excess in our body insulin acts and it will decrease the glucose level in our body this is called regulation if we have low glucose in our body glucagon acts and tell the liver that break down uh, glycogen into glucose because we have low glucose level in blood now so this is the regulation and this is the regulation of endocrine endocrine system regulation right so these two systems are responsible for the regulation of for the regulation of hemostasis in our body the next thing the next thing is protection so there is some system is required to protect these all the system because we are taking bacteria in food we are taking viruses bacteria in inhalation also because we have a lot we have millions of viruses millions of bacteria in air circulating when we inhale we taking oxygen but as well as we have we are taking viruses we are taking bacteria so which system is responsible for the protection of our body from these foreign particles the immune system immune system immune system mainly present in blood we have two types of blood do you know two types of blood one is red blood and the second one is white. white blood the white blood is responsible for immunity it is responsible for immunity for example we have oxygen but we also we also have bacteria in blood bacteria in blood we have white blood cells macrophages the, what is the role of these macrophages it engulf pathogens and bacteria and protect us from the effect of these bacteria for example if some bacteria become dominant on our system immune system for example uh, pneumococci for example if we have we take pneumococci in inhalation or in food and if it become dominant on our the immune system it will cause pneumonia it will cause pneumonia in our body for example if type b bacteria is dominant become dominant on our immune system it will cause typhoid in our body so the immune system is responsible for protection of body the second system is lymph lymphatic system lymphatic system is full of macrophages full of other t cells k cells which which are killing cells but as well as immune cell have the role in killing the cells but one of the important role that it can differentiate body cell and foreign cells or particles koi ke sama khabar the immune system chale ga na da otik ramang bach gayi we have another system which is called lymphatic system and lymphatic system is one way system one way system the spleen is the spleen is the part of lymphatic system and it have role in immunity and protection the one another system which is very 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 important is also have role in protection what is that system any one of you doctors ha huh? skin we have skin which is called integumentary system integumentary system we have skin here called integumentary system 
and also protects the body from external environment what is the role of skin it covers the body and about 30 to 20 percent um, body weight is covered by skin and the skin is for protection for example if we are touching some something and it is hot which thing will protect us from this hotness skin so skin is the another system which is uh, have a role in protection of our body so we have four factors in homeostasis the one is intake the second one is removal the third one is regulation the fourth one is protection digestive system respiratory system is responsible for intaking of food and electro electrolytes from external environment the cardiovascular system is responsible for the distribution of these nutrients in body distribution of nutrients and electrolytes in body also in the form of blood in the form of yeah with the help of blood the re removal systems the removing systems are digestive system liver kidney system these are the main system which is responsible for the removing of waste product from body which which is the one of the main factor the removal is the main factor of homeostasis of our body the third one is the regulation the first thing which is responsible for regulation is nervous system the second is endocrine system for protection there is immune system and skin integumentary system but the last one there are two systems remaining in our body the first one is musculoskeletal system the second is reproductive system what is the role of reproductive system in homeostasis what is the role of musculoskeletal system in homeostasis for example if we are taking it as i already uh, told you that if we have a wish to uh, eat food is the food is coming itself to you for eating no we are moving with the help of musculoskeletal system we are taking foods we are reached to foods through musculoskeletal system this is the important role and which is simple in homeostasis if you are not able to go you will not you will, uh, you will cannot uh, take food and you will affect the second is reproductive system the maintenance of all these systems the maintenance of all these systems in coming generation is the role of reproductive system in coming generation for example if you have defect in some system that defect for example genetic diseases we have for example heart failure heart failure is genetic diabetes is genetic if you have diabetes in your family blood pressure your coming generation will also have hypertension diabetes so uh, for maintenance of all these systems to next generation at transferring of these systems to next generation is the role of reproductive system so also reproductive system have an uh, indirect role in homeostasis this is all about our body and homeostasis of our body anyone